you can have a good one. Five cats. I would like to welcome every single one of you that are here today, especially the first time comers. Uh, let the record reflect that it is uh, 706, October 22nd. Shall the meeting begin? Um, Mr. Clerk, roll call, please. Mayor Thundro? Here. Councilwoman Steril? Here. Vice Mayor Galvin? Here. Councilman Bienname? Here. Councilwoman Keys? Here. Mayor, we have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, let us stand for the Pledge of Allegiance that will be led by Ilianis Nieves from Florida International University. She's a freshman, and we will remain standing for the invocation by Pastor Ude Ogali, Redeemed Christian Church of God Victory. He's from Paris. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, please join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Good evening, everybody. Shall we please... Um, Acknowledge the mayor and I, I acknowledge the council men and the council women. And uh, let us pray. Lord, we lift up the city of North Miami to you and pray for her peace, progress, and prosperity. We pray that your light will shine in this city, this great city, and bring illumination pointing to the way forward. We lift up the mayor, Tondro, that you grant our divine wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, that you guard and guide her, giving her the grace to do your will, which will move the city forward. We lift up the lieutenants, the council men and the council women, that they be men and women of great insight and wisdom, and together they will move this city to where you want her to be. We pray particularly for tonight that things will be done decently and orderly so that profound reasoning will birth decisions that will accelerate progress as expected. Lord, we ask that you yield your presence to this meeting tonight so that there'll be no disruptions, rather there'll be agreements, more conclusions than pending issues. This we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor. Mr. Manager, are there any addition, addition, or amendment? Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, there are some changes to the agenda uh, that I'm requesting, and that is uh, tab G, as in uh, golf, needs to be heard before tab D, as in David. However, I will uh, indicate that the um, petitioner um, wanted to remove this item again. Um, they feel that they need to make changes that will perhaps satisfy the council and the community. Um, so uh, they were under the understanding that uh, this would be granted to them uh, as in the prior two other occasions. Uh, as such, um, uh, the assumption was made and they're not here tonight. So uh, based upon that and them not being here, uh, we may want to give them a final um, opportunity to pull it, if that's the desire of the dais uh, to be presented um, 
for a final time later. That's that's uh, the decision of the dais. Were they notified that there will be that there would be in India on the agenda today? Uh, they were informed, but they did put in a request um, and to remove it. And based upon that request, the other two times it was granted. Uh, so they just kind of uh, assumed that it would be uh, they would have that opportunity again. However, um, uh, as I indicated to them by phone today, uh, additions and deletions, once an item is posted, um, it's presented and then it's voted on by the dais. Okay. Yeah, just go ahead. Councilwoman Steele. What seemed to be the problem? This is the third time they actually removed the item. Um, they feel that um, they want to have an opportunity to uh, make, they met with the community. Uh, they want to make some modifications that they feel that would be community friendly. Uh, they want to have uh, another opportunity to meet with uh, mayor and council independently to present uh, their case and they have not had the opportunity to do that uh, along with making the changes that they feel that are will be community uh, worthy. Mm -hmm. Vice Mayor Galvin, you have the uh, I was just going to move to continue it two more weeks and let them know this will be the last continuation barring some really different circumstances. Let me ask my um, the city attorney what is uh, our um, rights. rights on this particular instance? Uh, well, you have several <coughs> options. You can continue. You can hear in absentia. Uh, and what that would mean is that you would go through the uh, application. You have the documents in front of you. You can ask staff uh, whatever questions you have. You have uh, the documents for the plan and so forth in front of you and I'm sure you've studied them and you can make a decision based on uh, the criteria set forth in the ordinance for the land use change and and move from there uh, or you can uh, yeah so those are your two options you can either hear the matter uh, without the uh, applicants presence or you can continue it uh, as requested by Councilman Galvin follow up with the mayor's question um, I heard the city manager said he told the applicant that that would be their last time is that legal can we actually tell them this is your last time to present uh, an item before us well uh, you you can I mean they do applicants do have the right to be heard uh, however if there are circumstances where they continually are coming before the council and, and choosing not to have their item heard, then you can take some measures. You can deny the application without prejudice, which is outlined in the ordinance, and that would require them to reapply in the future. Uh, so, uh, yeah, but no, it's one year or depending on the council's uh, choice. Mm -hmm. So, next question. Um, I spoke to the manager, <coughs> and uh, as of yesterday at 6 o'clock, I was told this matter was not being heard. Um, there are a lot of people in the neighborhood surrounding this that are very interested in speaking on this. And I called a couple of the homeowner association people who are very vocal and said, well, it's off. Uh, for some strange reason, I called today just to make sure was it going to be on or off? And now I heard it was on. So I'm really, really troubled about this. <clears throat> it's really taking a lot of my time to get ready and prepare for this item. It's in my district. There's a lot of technical issues on it. Uh, number two, I think this has been noticed three times in the daily business review. And I want to make sure, if we do it again, that the applicant is bearing all the costs involved with having to continue and continue and continue. And uh, my, my question is, uh, several people have raised to me, I'm ready to hear it. I know a lot of the people who wanted to speak are not here. I know what a lot of them had to say. And it being a first reading, I don't know if that matters, but I really don't want to have a notice issue, whereas <coughs> we make a decision and they come back and then it costs because 
then they appeal because we have a, we've been handing out this um, agenda and it's saying pull. So people are leaving who didn't want to hear it. So I want to make sure we don't have a notice <coughs> issue. Um, I would rather hear it, but if we're going to have any kind of notice issue, then I would second uh, Councilman Galvin's motion. What I don't <coughs> understand, um, Councilman, Councilwoman Keys, if you said that many people who are interested about this item were supposed to be here tonight, they did not know that item was going to be pulled. And obviously they are not very interested because they are not here. Well, they, w I didn't get notice till almost 5 o'clock today that it was back on. What do you want to do? We, we don't have the petitioner here. We don't, uh, apparently don't have a lot of residents here. Why, why put ourselves through two are you, hours? Are you doing a motion? Yes, I already made a motion to continue this two more weeks and that we notify the, the, the applicant that this is their last two week. I mean, I, I'm not just saying, uh, legally maybe we can, maybe we can't, but just let them know, be here next time and quit it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they've had months to speak to mayor and council. Months. This has been going on from the planning commission through. This is the third time. Do we do we know that we can actually vote on this item? Either vote for it or vote against it. No. We don't need. So we can choose to vote on it tonight for the second first reading, and then allow um, the city manager or the city attorney to bring it back to us, or we can actually vote to um, have it the second. Well, um, to but come back. Can we vote on it tonight and then on the second reading, if it passes, for, for them to come and do an, a presentation? Because it's been going on since July, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah. So if you vote affirmatively, yes. But if you vote to deny yes. the application, then no. Okay. So I will just, just for your, so you have uh, all of the information that you need <coughs> to make an informed decision. Your code allows you to, again, I stated, to deny without prejudice. And they can reapply at any time. So you can deny the application, and they can reapply two weeks from now or whenever it is that they have decided that they want to move forward. Or if you then decide that you want to grant or uh, approve it, then it will be heard for second reading, and they can be here to make their presentation. And then okay. they have really high fees, and they also ha then have to go in front since of the planning commission again. Since they would there's start a motion, the since they would there's start a the motion, process again. Okay, since I'll, I'll, there's I'll, a motion, I'll second Mr. Councilman Clerk, again. roll call, because I have a suggestion <laughs> if that one fails. Okay. I'm sorry, Councilman Bienemy, What's you wanted to speak? The, the motion was to take continue the continue item. Two yeah, weeks. For right. next week, okay. next council meeting. All right. oh, you said next council meeting. Council meeting. Sorry, yeah, two weeks, next council meeting, whichever. No, I said one week. It's, that's what he says. Oh. <laughs> okay, so councilwoman Steril. Uh, yes. <coughs> Vice Mayor Galvin. Yes. Mayor Thundro. No. Councilman Bienname. No. Councilwoman Keys. Yes. Item has been continued <laughs> for two weeks. And that's just for the record, tab G and tab D. And um, Mr. Clerk, would you please note that uh, after these two weeks, they would not come back in front of this board until they are ready. Duly noted, Mayor. That's the truth, so we're just not going to deny it. Mr. City Manager, are there any item to be deleted or added? That, that's it, Mayor. Thank you. Um, special presentations? At this time, Mayor, we're going to have a special, special presentation from the Alita Partners regarding uh, the Local Preference Initiative uh, by Mr. Herb Tillman and Joe Silver, um, along with the Swerdlow Group. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council, good evening. Staff, how y'all doing? Um, I was asked early on in this process to at least quarterly appear before you and give an update to the operations of our local preference program, um, identifying students that are in training, identifying um, goals met as far as expenditures on the site and how much of it is going through City of North Miami vendors 
as well as identifying the number of city residents that we have working on the site. Uh, on October 15th, we circulated a copy of, a, of our quarterly report as required by the lease. I'm going to call out some of the salient points to you now. Uh, you each have a copy of that report, and I'll be happy to answer any questions on it either tonight or at any time in the future. Performance shows as to the construction cost expense to date since we took the site over on August 20th. We have spent $5,132,000, of which $1.1,000,000. Six three has gone to City of North Miami businesses, vendors, subcontractors, and the like. That equates to a 22.61% of all the dollars spent on that site are going to City of North Miami vendors, subcontractors, and so forth. Um, on that line of reasoning, we have found that it would behoove us to have certain business-to-business -business related events. We had one such event about three weeks ago at, the, uh, at our offices. We had over 200 people attend, many of which were contractors from outside seeking to do business on Biscayne Landing or other parts in the city. We took the, the opportunity to explain how you qualify to do business on this site as a city of North Miami vendor. Uh, we also had many interested residents showing up there wanting to see what kind of contractors were interested in doing business at that site and in addition in addition to that we had a fair portion of city of north miami businesses and vendors showing up there and we use that opportunity to get them to network if you will you've heard that term used a lot lately um, especially when the economic downturn the networking that took place there allowed these businesses that are city of north miami businesses currently to team up, if you will, with some of the larger companies from outside of the city to tackle some of these larger projects that's coming up in the near future on that project. So this was a great stimulant to the local economy and that it showed them that there's real opportunity out there and, and, and that they don't have to try and bite off these two and three million dollar contracts on their own. We also took the opportunity to introduce the many people who showed up on the business side of the spectrum to the various programs we have to promote them to either joint venture or make, making funds available for startup costs and that sort of thing. So it was a very well received event. It went on for about six hours and uh, very well attended. And uh, we, we found that to be quite successful. So we're gonna pursue uh, business to business type of meetings in the future to kind of mimic that relationship and to stimulate the growth of the businesses in this local community and to show them there's real opportunities out there. This is a tangible achievement for them. Moving on to the city residents employed on the site, we tracked them by month. In the month of July, there were a total number of 89 employees related to that production on that site, of which 27 were city of North Miami residents equates to about 30% on a pie chart. In the month of August, we had similar results. In 91 total employees, 27 were city residents. So the project is doing what it was meant to do by stimulating employment within the city. Of course, we want to see it do better in the total number of employees and we want to carry the same margins of success. Finally, in the month of September, we had about 180 employees. We had a big infusion of some of some uh, some trucking activities, which we started back up after about a three-month lull, um, and we expect to catch back up to that 30%. But currently, we're at 19% of the 180 employees. 34 were city residents. Um, we have been exploring some additional opportunities at employment out there, and we spoke with uh, one company out of Coconut Creek that works with various vendors and contractors that are new to the Tri-County area by providing them employees that are at entry level um, uh, capacities but in employing them they are introduced to the local trade unions apprenticeship programs. Um, they are offered a job initially where they go to work immediately and by working with the selected contractors, the contractor agrees 
to allow them off of work early one day a week to attend these apprenticeship programs. We had interest in placing electricians. We searched through our database. Immediately available were eight candidates. We sent them up to uh, Dania, where they were interviewed. We ran into what we see to be a challenge that we have to overcome in the future. Of the eight candidates that we selected, notified them, showed them where they had to, sh to, to go, only four showed up. Of the four that showed up, every single one was offered a job as an apprentice electrician and the opportunity to not only start working at an earning capacity that was, I believe, about $12 an hour, which is pretty good startup wages when you come into a trade that you're not real familiar with, but also the opportunity to attend the apprenticeship program that was offered by the, the local unions up there. Of the four that were offered the job, unfortunately, only one showed up for work. So we have some challenges to work through there, and ABC is working with us through that. The opportunities are there. We just have to give them the support to see that they take advantage of the opportunities. In addition to that, some of the vendors that we've been working with consistently now since March are Turner Tech, who Sophia Hall is here tonight, if you'd like to hear from her. Um, I made the city manager a promise back in March. And I promised him, he, he saw that this program wasn't moving as quick as he'd like it to do, and, and, and I was equally uh, displeased with it, moving so slowly. We had trouble finding qualified and certified vendors that could offer this kind of training that was recognized by either this, the, the county and, and the state school boards or by the National Labor Unions or Labor Relations Board. Nationally or locally recognized was all we wanted so that when the student completes the the training, they receive a certificate that tells them they possess a certain level of skill sets. We dealt with one contractor for several months to no avail. We then moved on. We found Turner Tech, with the help of Leslie Prudent, by the way. Leslie, are you here? Thank you, Leslie. Sophia Hall is here to, uh, to give her uh, a quick statement as to what the success rate of that is and for a moment I'm going to turn it over to Sophia and she'll tell you how many students we have enrolled to date and I'll bring you up to date on the promise I made and our ability to keep it. Good evening. When we first started the program we had 17.5 students. At this present time we have five no-shows and at this present time we had um, one of my five assessor absent at the end of today as of today we have 72 students continue in this program with different vocational trades so we do monitor them we called and see what is the reason for the no-shows and the assets absence and there's several very reason that we do work with them so as of today we do have 72 students enrolled at Turner Tech and around 50 of them also went to ocean class. So they do have, 50 of them have their ocean class. And the rest of them received their ocean class through OIC. Okay. Thank you. To, to further explain what Sophia's group is doing, she's broken down the several pursuits or skill sets, if you will, into air conditioning, carpentry, masonry, electricians, and I think we even have some welding in there. Plumbing, we have plumbing, we have welding. Uh, these students come in at entry level in the training where they go through a nationally accredited core construction course of training, and then they choose a skill set or a trade, if you will, to pursue, and Sophia's group takes them to that level. The total duration of her program is anywhere from 12 to 16 months, depending on the trade. It's a rather grueling program. It takes a lot of dedication on the part of the student. It's four nights a week, four to five hours a night, for anywhere from 12 to 16 months. So it's, it takes desire, it takes dedication, and it takes a lot of support from our group to see that if a student gets to a position where they need, to, they need a little extra support, in whatever field it is, we need to be there to offer them that support. Um, I have all these facts and figures. I have names and that sort of thing, if, if you'd like me to share them with you. Finally, 
I was asked the other day how we stand on the 2.5 million that we are committed to spend on occupational training and vocational education to date. Our first lease year ended August 20th. I made the manager a promise that I would have at least 60 students enrolled or graduated in some form or another by the end of this calendar year. Okay, we haven't gotten to the end of this calendar yet. We're still in just starting the fourth quarter. We had 107 students that were either enrolled or completed some form of this initial education. As far as spent, money spent toward the two and a half million over the seven year period, we have a timeline where we had committed to spend $132,500 the first year, first lease year. We met that. Even with a dropout rate, understanding that some students had the initial desire, they enroll in this program, find that something changes in their life. They have a family change, they have a health change, they have a job change, something that they cannot overcome, they drop out. The dropout rate has been somewhere in the neighborhood of 14%. Joe? 20%, I'm sorry, I under, underestimated that. Um, of those 107 that we had enrolled, six have dropped out for various reasons. We're trying to find out why, trying to get them back into the program. But this is something that seems to be standard in the industry. And we're looking into what we can do to make it unstandard, if you will, make it, you know, make it, make it better. We need to have a better success rate than that. So that's some of the challenges. Next year, in working toward that goal, of 2.5 million at the end of the seventh year, we'll spend about a half a million dollars. The year after that, it'll increase to about 600,000 and so forth. And on our current schedule, by the beginning of the seventh year, we'll have completely spent the entire 2.5 million. And we're not gonna stop there. We are training people right now at the beginning phases of construction work. We have contacted other institutions that offer vocational training, for instance, <coughs> Pardon me. FIU, right down the end of 151st Street, offers a culinary arts training. Of the, I'd say of, of all of the people that come to us looking for occupational training, vocational education, only about 30% are interested in construction work. The other 70% are more interested in what I would consider to be uh, lifestyle work that is more geared toward what our end tenants, what our tenants are going to require, such as hospitality work for the hotel, uh, servers work and culinary arts work for some of the restaurants that we have, auto mechanics for one of the auto dealers, that type of thing, end user type of careers, if you will, vocations. So in, in, in looking into some other vocational education courses, we came across FIU with a culinary arts program that is not geared or related to acquiring any sort of a university degree. It is a vocational education program. It is conducted on Saturdays for 10 weeks in a row, only on Saturdays. It's all day Saturday, but it's only on Saturdays. They come in knowing nothing about the culinary arts and they leave not only with the tools that they need, but with the skill sets that they need to begin work as a line chef or a line cook, if you will, in any restaurant. They don't have to start washing dishes like most people who get into restaurant and culinary arts work start that don't have the education. They get the vocational training to start as a line cook. Not only that, but FIU also offers, promises offer of at least one job. I'll take this a step further and then I'll open it up to questions. Great. We are, some of the work we're doing on this site is heavy equipment operating intensive. We have contacted a school out in Miami Lakes that offers that training and we're gonna work a deal with them. Thank you. I have a question for you. Yes, ma'am. Um, you said you just closed your first year in doing this, so is it a, a program that have just started? I have you have any student graduated yet in the programs? I, I'm sorry, Mayor, I didn't. Any graduation yet in the programs? Yes, yes, we've had, um, 37 graduate from the core construction courses. This is a little shorter term, qualifies them. I'm sorry? 32. Okay, I was staying correct. That's Marie Gill, who is a 
administrates our program. We had 32 graduate from the 16-week program, two nights a week, and what they graduate with is a set of skills that they can go to any construction job and start work immediately. They're fully safety trained, they understand tools handling, they understand all of the job awareness skills that you need to go on a construction site and work safely and return to your families alive at the end of the day. So we have 32 of those. We have another group that's gonna graduate in March, right? In March, and they will be the They'll be further along. They'll be in the long-term program that uh, that that Sophia's group okay. Uh, administers. Okay. What, what what is the procedure for you to, besides the database that you have, to um, enroll or to have students? Because from what I understand. Uh, In July, you've had 89, 27 were from the city. August 91, 27 were from the city. That's your lucky number. September 180, 34 of them were the city residents. What is the procedure used in order to recruit um, these people? To recruit the people? Mm -hmm. Well, we have several ways of recruiting them, one of which is some of these job fairs that, that you've seen that we've conducted over the last year. Uh, another way, of course, we have a lot of walk-in traffic. Um, a third way is we do a lot of work on radio and the media and in publications to advertise to, to, to in order to become available for these contractors, you have to be registered in our database. We list our address of our local preference office and we get them there. We had, as, as you heard me mention a while ago, I had an unusually large attendance uh, residents who were interested in what we were doing at the business to business meeting so we use that to kind of cross train to let them meet the contractors and see make themselves available in their various skill sets I, I believe that the um, the former mayor and councils understood the need um, of the city to have people trained city residents trained and employed right. and up till this day I cannot comprehend the low rate of city resident responding to those ads or being hired. Mm -hmm. um, I remember at one point, Mr. Swidler and I spoke about um, having people driving those trucks. And he said he couldn't find any city residents with CDL. Mm -hmm. I went on, the, on two radio stations. Next day, over 75 people with CDL, city residents showed up. So I believe there's a problem the way that the recruitment is being done, um, the reaching out to the community and letting them know what's going on. I've heard ads on the radio, but it's a general ad. It's not, it's ever been anything specific. Calling people, asking them to come, and this, there's openings here, and this is what the requirements are for them to go. And I would like to see that change, if possible, please. Okay. I will... Uh I'll get with my team, which we meet next Friday. I have, <laughs> we just engaged a, a public relations firm that's going to have some input on the, you know, what they've seen to be successful in the past. And um, if you like, I could give you an update in about two weeks as to what our efforts are to improve on that. And I'm open for any input, not only from the city council members and the mayor and staff, but from any residents out there that have worked a program similar to this where it requires local pre local residents to participate in a construction project and let's let's share some ideas let's understand you know what has worked in the past and what maybe has not worked so well in the past so we can improve on this okay. anyone else has any questions for mr. Tillman all right thank you mr. Tillman thank you Manager. Mayor, the uh, next presentation will be uh, coming regarding our Mardi Gras, and we have, uh, uh, along with Mr. Ringo Kayard, Kevin Kayard, who will take the lead <coughs> of this presentation. Good evening, Madam Mayor, Mr. Vice Mayor, Council, City Manager, City Attorney, City Clerk, Deputy City Manager, how are you guys this evening? 
How's the crowd doing this evening? You know? um, I'm just giving you guys an update regarding the Mardi Gras uh, in Miami. Um, three members of the council were not um, were not here when we when this event passed through. So um, you guys were given like a little packlet, informative packlet of what's been going on. So I'm here to just give you an update and give you some more information about the event. Um, as if you guys would open your packlet, your packet to the first page, please. It it pretty much just shows the diversification in Miami-Dade County of why this event is important uh, because of the collective pool of people that are in this county as well as this city specifically. It pretty much gives you a breakdown of the demographics of North Miami um, and why a multicultural event is is needed. Um, if you turn to the next page, you'll see that there's the past, present, and future attendances from uh, 2006 all the way to um, what we expect that the event will happen in the future. But getting down to the nitty gritty of the event, what the updates that we do have for you is that we've placed an itinerary um, in the packet of the times that the event will be in the breakdown of what the times of the events will be. Furthermore, if you go to the next page, you'll see that the route has been established as of recent, last week as a matter of fact, which, was, which is going to be held from 151st to 160th on Biscayne Boulevard where the parade is going to be going southbound and we have options to either put a stage on the 151st street intersection or the 160th um, street by the intersection. But before I, before I move on, do you guys have any questions that you want to ask or? All right. Um, the, the, next, the next page on the packet is the expenses for the North Miami Mardi Gras, the projected expenses, and this is on a local ultra conservative expense. And it gives you the breakdown of logistics, advertising, entertainment, uh, the municipalities, as well as the vendors. On the next page, I've illustrated the different revenue streams. And on this page, there's a typo. The bottom is supposed to say revenues, not expenses. But it is the potential revenue streams that the Mardi Gras will bring to, to the city, which are sponsorships, vendors, parking, refreshments, and different marketing aspects, uh, like VIP tents, merchandising, and uh, pre and post events. And on the following page, you'll see that there is a timeline from now until the event where it pretty much gives you a guideline of what we're going to do from now on. And that's about it. Thank you. Question for you. How many sponsors so far have you gotten? As of right now, we've, we've, we've locked up two sponsors. Um, one with WastePro and one... We're working, we're finalizing the final details with a distinguished gas station owner who wants to actually get the rights for um, certain aspects of the event, like refreshments and so forth. So that's a very large sum that we're working on. And how much money does that represent? That in itself, uh, about $130,000 so far. For both of them? No, it's combined. For both? For both, yes. Mr. City Manager. Yes, ma'am. How long have we have had that contract? Uh, that This contract is, uh, I believe, since May, March. I'm sorry, March of this year. According to the contract, there were several steps to be made by the... Um, consultant on this and how much of it have we got do we have a monthly report 
from March to this day? Uh, we we have a monthly. Uh, there is a monthly obligation. Um, we are because of not having a route. I would say that we're about uh, uh, a month behind. That I would like to have uh, been at this stage about a month ago uh, because of not having a, a route. Um, and as far as um, the other measurables that they're supposed to have done, um, basically it's it's at the I don't want to say the leeway of the consultant, but it's at the advice of the consultant of where we should be. Uh, based upon their indication that we're on schedule. Based on the contract, are we on schedule, Mr. Manager? Based upon the contract, we are on schedule. Thank you. Now, I, I would say that we're probably about a month behind uh, because of not having the location, as I indicated. Uh, I would have liked to have had that secured uh, back in August, uh, September. Okay. Um, how much money would this Mardi Gras bring to the city? How much will it bring to the city? Mm -hmm. um, it, it's hard to project, but in speaking to the consultant, um, the Mardi Gras is not designed to be a revenue generating event. Um, it, it could break even or it could cost the city some funding. Like? Um, I, I would have to defer to the consultant on that. Um, $385,000. It's on the... Well, that's, that's it's, it's, the... It's yes, that is, that's the expense. Uh, the, they are offsetting that on potential revenue. If that revenue does not come, it will cost the city the expense of that event. And do we have a special fund for that? Um, no, the city does not have funds to cover the, this event in its entirety. We're depending upon the consultant's direction uh, to, to find revenue, um, and which they're basing it off sponsorship. But could we cover this event? No. We, we don't have it. It's not a budgeted item. So how do you intend to move on with this item if we don't have the money to cover the expense? Because so far, according to Mr. Cayard, he only has one sponsor, which is West Pro, another potential one, and both of them will generate $130,000. Um, we're we have to depend on the consultant's advice that uh, we're going to get sponsorship. Uh, but again, without that sponsorship, um, you know, which is a concern, um, it, it could cost the city. But again, the consultant is indicating that um, they're at a point to now move forward and, and to secure sponsorships. And how long would that take? Uh, I have to defer to the consultant, uh, Mayor. Mr. Ma Madam Mayor, um, in regards to sponsorships for events, it usually takes six months. And the reason it takes six months is because companies have budgets that they do for the quarter. The event is actually in the second quarter of the year. So right now we're actually in the prime of actually attaining sponsorships for the event. We were delayed with the route. We had four suggested routes before, but it wasn't until this week where we solidified the actual route. And one of the main concerns of the sponsors are they would like to know where the event is specifically because it, that generates what kind of sponsors you actually get um, from one location to another location. And not, not only that, it solidifies the credibility of the event when we have the venue, we have the city support, and so forth. So we are in the prime of attaining sponsorships. Like I said, since we've, since we've had the route, we've already picked up two sponsors, and that's okay. been a week. Let so me ask you this. It took you seven months to decide which route it was going to be, or uh, is it city problem that we're 
that were caused that um, you didn't have any routes? It's, I can't say it was a city issue, um, just for the simple fact that we proposed four different routes before. Who is we? Um, myself, as well as um, my company, as alongside with uh, the police who have been there for us from the beginning. Um, and we, we had to actually modify the route four different times. Um, Mr. City Manager. Yes. Uh, how much has the city spent so far? Um, the contract indicated that we would pay fifty thousand dollars, and I believe it's five thousand seven seven thousand a month. Um, so since March, um, it's been about six months. Uh, March, 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 yeah, so. Uh, forty-two thousand have been spent. Yes. For the company to take seven months to find a route to do a Mardi Gras. Um, I I can't speak as to what the consultant has been. What well, the Mr. Manager, yeah. you were supposed to be the one looking out for this contract to ensure that every step is respected. Correct. You have told. You just said that they are up to date with their report. But yet, uh, Mr. Kayard just mentioned that it took them seven months to find a route or to decide on a route. How many more months do you believe you need in order for this project to move on? Well, at this point, once you have the route, everything is, is pretty much smooth sailing. When we did our first event, it took us a year and a half to get that route. Kaye Ocho took them two and a half years to get the route because... There are certain aspects that we don't control that affect the route, for example. Like, we actually decided to go on West Dixie and 135, but the cost for the detour would be tremendous. So we had to find a different location. Not only that, the size of what we need for the floats as well as the stages and so forth. Um, we had another route um, going down 163rd, which is a North Miami road. However, the the city of North Miami Beach has somewhat of an issue um, just because of their residents living on Eastern Shores. So it would and Sunny Isles. So we had to we had to change so we had to change the route so it's best fit for the city. Plus, this route is closer to the city. It's not like we've been sitting around and just waiting for things to just happen. We've diligently created site plans for every single route as well as um, going through the routes um, with the assistance of the police to make this happen. But now that the route has been established, as you can see, it's a lot easier to generate sponsorships because it holds credibility to the actual event. Okay. City of North Miami Beach have some issues because uh, of their residents and the ones who live in Sunny Isle. City of North Miami have Portofino. I believe there's about eight buildings there. We have no problems with the noise or with the... Uh, uh, Ma Madam Mayor, let me say this in regards to the route. Mm -hmm. uh, in this particular route mm -hmm. selection, 151st to 160th, mm -hmm. uh, there will be no uh, residential impact along the boulevard. Right. The, as I'd indicated before, I wish that we had the location selected about a month and a half ago. Um, the city and, and city staff is is not accustomed to doing Mardi Gras. So I, I had raised this issue at the very inception of this, uh, which is why we, the, the then mayor council selected to have a consultant. So we're depending solely on them and their experience and their expertise and their guidance in this matter. So that's where we are as a staff. They did select routes. Uh, those routes had uh, security concerns. Uh, they selected other areas. There were other concerns that was raised on those routes. Um, uh, there was a series of steps that we had to go through um, each time that we selected a new route, and it put a delay. Again, as I indicated, I wish we had that selected a uh, month and a half ago. Unfortunately, we don't. Um, <coughs> this is a very unique event 
It's not what the city does. It's not what city staff does. And we're depending solely on the consultant uh, as their experience to bring us this. I wish we had this done a month and a half ago, but uh, unfortunately we don't. And I can only just depend on what the consultant is saying that now that a route is selected, that they're comfortable. But uh, again, it's not our experience. So the, d the dais um, has to depend on the consultant uh, like we are. I had indicated initially that this is not what we do as a city staff, but this is what the community wanted. And we're depending solely on this consultant for guidance, experience, and, and uh, their lead on this issue. If anybody else has enough, I will continue because I have more questions. I would just ask a couple questions. Um, Go ahead. With regard to expenses, um, we, we have expenses, but the city does not, <coughs> the previous council allocated was at 105 or 120 thousand to the consultant over the period of the contract and that's already been allocated from the Biscayne Landing funds so that does not need to be in our budget or it's already budgeted that's correct okay. I believe so. and I'll as far as expenses back. we don't I mean all these expenses look like a lot of money but are we going to incur any expenses if for some reason we don't have the Mardi Gras are we incurring any additional expenses other than the hundred twenty thousand we laid out for the consultant no. No. <clears throat> okay, so if we don't, if it doesn't work, we've paid our consultant a fee and all these other expenses are irrelevant because we're not going to have them. That's, that's true. Okay. Um, again, this, ex this budget sheet mm -hmm. is presented on their projections as expenses. We as staff can confirm the expense sheet. We as staff do not have the experience of a Mardi Gras to confirm the projected revenue. Okay. And and that, that is a concern. We but don't we don't I, I think uh, we they need say I sponsorships uh, and we're dependent on their experience to say that this money can be generated. My opinion is we've got the location which I think is major. <clears throat> I'd like to see give it a couple months to make sure, see if the sponsors are coming in. I wouldn't want to just stop because you don't you know, we're a month behind. That's all. <coughs> okay. 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 I have no quote. Go ahead. I, I, I if it's a motion from uh, I have a councilwoman, uh, it's, uh, it's not a motion. I have this a is just a discussion. Okay. I, mean, okay. Just okay. Ahead, I have a question based on the, I, I was not clear about mm. the answer that you give councilwoman Keys okay. regarding if we're not having the Mardi Gras, but we still um, have to pay the consultant one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. That's what it is? Because it was we had a contract with him for one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. If we decided not having the Mardi Gras, we still have to pay it. If that's what you said. I think that um the consultant um was able to get the council to agree to have <coughs> a fifty thousand dollar down payment and seven thousand a month. If this council decides if, if to not have the Mardi Gras then it stops there. So, excuse uh, me. You mean the city have already disbursed ninety two thousand dollars? Is that what you're saying? Really? Because at first you said seven thousand dollars a month for six months. Now you're talking about fifty thousand dollars down payment plus seven thousand dollars a month, yeah. which means the city have already spent ninety two thousand dollars on this project that staff has no experience on. Is that what you're telling me? Uh, their contract asks for $50,000 down and 7000 a month. So $92,000 have been spent out of the $120,000 allocated? That's correct. Approximately. And I like to go back and look at the numbers, but that's what has been spent. Is that correct, Mr. Kayar? Yes. And... Uh, $92,000 have been allocated to a project, and seven months later we have one sponsor and one pot potential one, and four routes, and finally one route, 
definite? That's correct. I have a question. Matt, yeah, have Go a ahead. Oh, I think Scott. Uh, I defer. Go ahead, Vice Mayor. Thank you. Um, through you, Madam Mayor, to staff, US-1 is a major federal highway. We say we've got a route. Do you have confirmation from either FDOT or any other? FDOT is a state road. So do, what confirmation do you have that we have this route? The route, um, th this is what takes so long for the route. You have to select a route. It goes through a security um, uh, evaluation. Uh, it, then if it passes the security evaluation of how many people, who it impacts, from there it, the application process goes to the uh, whatever agency we need to get permission. Uh, this do, we, do we have that permission? I mean, we, we're saying we right are now we in have the application. The route. Hmm? Uh, we're in the application phase of getting that so approved. Oh, we, so we don't have a we route. We as a body have, we have a preferred route, but we don't have governmental confirmation that we have the route that permits have been. Uh, you follow where I'm going. Oh, I, I, you know, I just do. shut down Biscayne Boulevard for 10 I, blocks, and we don't just say it, and then it happens. So. We've had conversation with the state of Florida. Um, they are open. I don't have an approved um, letter indicating that that can take place. Um, but these are the complications that goes through an event like this. Uh, this is what we had indicated. This is not what we do. This is a very unique event. Um, there are challenges. There are challenges. And they are, those challenges have caused some delays. Okay. Uh, and we do not have a, an approved letter from FDOT indicating that, yes, you can use this route. We put it through the phase of um, selecting the route. Here are the addressing the security concerns. And now the process is, is making contact with the uh, proper agencies, which we have. And now we're meeting with them to proceed with the official application. How long? That results of that, I don't, I don't know. How long will the application process last? Take 60 days. 60 days? So you'd need 60 days to know whether or not US-1 is shut down from 150 to 160, 151 to 160. And, and here's just a weird question I have. Mm -hmm. 160, like, there's nothing there. 163rd, I could visualize that. 160 is like, uh, you know, the sushi okay. restaurant I go to or something like that. Like, how are you going to feed Biscayne Boulevard, like what's the route going to be? I see, I see seating areas at the south end, seating areas at the north end, according to this, two stages. But how does, how does that work? How do you feed the parade route oh. and come back off? What, what happens is, is that if you take a look at the map, um, there's going to be one stage. It's just there's, depending on the traffic flow and what we get back, it's, there's stage one, that's an option, and stage two, it's going to be on either end. So... Um, so it's go what's going to happen is, is that the floats, the floats are actually 12 feet. Right. Um, and, and just to be clear, it, we, we've already secured the, the talent, the floats, the specification of the floats. Um, and like I said, this is the time where we're getting sponsors for these floats as well as the parade. Okay, let's so imagine everything's paid for. The federal highway people have given us approval to shut and the only thing I can think down that ever shut down Biscayne is <laughs> the Orange Bowl Parade and the Miami Heat. No, when the Pope Miami came. Marlins. When the oh, Pope yeah, came. When the Pope came. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, but they but had it there. Well, well yeah. the thing is they shut down Biscayne four years in a row for us. Yeah. And, and we had it in front of Bayside all okay. the way to the Port of Miami. Okay. So, and that is a tremendous road. So who is it that we need to be asking permission to shut well, down Biscayne. Well, no, it's, 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 it's a federal, it's a federal road, right. but usually there's, um, you a know, there's, there's, yeah, there's a process that usually takes 60 days. What's the, what's the agency though? I just don't know. I know Is it's it not FDOT because FDOT controls state roads, state roads. but it, it, it's, it's, it's we, we deal directly with F, FDOT. Seven. Um, we, we actually deal with all American. See the, the vendor that we use is all American. They're the ones that actually deal with this. Um, we let them know exactly. There's one that set up the MOTs and get in contact with the actual um, people that deal with this. But FDOT is going to be part of this also, um, just because even though it's a federal road, there's a, I remember that we had to actually speak to FDOT 
um, when we had to shut it down in from 2004 to 2006. Okay. So let's imagine now FDOT is given permission, everything's sponsored. Where will the where will the floats stage? The where where will they be as people get on them and get off them? All right. There's there there's three locations. There's three locations. Okay. Um, there's FIU by the stadium. Um, which is, as you can see, that's one staging option where the floats would then go down because, as you can see, Biscayne is an eight-lane road. Right. We need to have two for the emergency vehicles and the police on the east, east, eastbound side. So the, the parade would actually go northbound and make a U-turn and stage going southbound. The parade is going to actually be going southbound from 160th all the way to 151st. And as you can see with the stage there, there's the French barricades that are there, that where the floats are going to actually drop off the actual people that are on the floats, and the floats will be escorted out of there to uh, a staging area. Okay. Uh, just a couple more questions. I'm sorry, Madam Mayor. Go ahead. Where will people park? Where will people like me coming to the parade, where will we park to... We are, we, are, um, we are actually in talks with FIU. They have a tremendous parking lot at FIU, um, which is located right by the parade. And again, that's, it's also another revenue stream. Uh, parking is very essential, and it is a tremendous revenue stream to this event. We are in talks with FIU to co-sponsor the event so we can use their facilities because that parking lot can hold over 2,000 vehicles um, just in that area. Um, and then we would have, we would have the, the, the people that attend the event shuttled to the actual event. So that's, that's a preliminary parking area. Okay. My last question, I believe, you mentioned Waste Pro is one of your sponsors. Have they actually written a check to you? Do you expect them to give you a cash donation? No, it's, pro it's probably going to come in Ankind Services, okay. where they're actually going to do the cleanup for the event. I noticed that it says in your budget we would pay them $21,000. No, no, no. It's not. that. See, these numbers are just an estimate of the cost, whether it's Ankine right. or, or, or cash money. As you can see, the police is on there also. This right. is an estimated amount, but it can come. It, it, it's, it, it's gonna, it may fluctuate. It may not fluctuate. Here's what I'm, con here's what I'm confused about. If Waste Pro is a sp Sponsor. Correct. Normally, sponsorship means they're writing a check to cover some costs. Not really. It could mean that they're an in-kind sponsor. Are they in-kind for $21,000? For the cleanup, because that, that's, that's the projected cost of the cleanup. Okay. So uh, you sort of need to redo your expenses here, because as far as expenses go, it looks like we're going to be paying Waste Pro $21,000 at some point during the day. Cleanup, prep, whatever, however you want to break it down. So if, if Waste Pro is donating their services, then A, they should be taken off the expense report, and B, that means of the 130000 you mentioned you've got, they're responsible for 21, it gives you 109000 109, that I guess this gas station is giving you? Correct. So, so are you expecting $109,000 cash donation from the gas station yeah, or that that see and, and this is what this this is this and is what we're working out with the actual with actual vendor but in regards to the waste pro for example the reason we have to put it on the expense budget is you have to have Checking a paper trail for you have to have a paper trail for just expenses um, you just can't say okay fine they're sponsoring this and then we, we sweep it under this is just a general expense of what a Mardi Gras will cost not necessarily what it will cost to the city because it is my job as a consultant to find as many funds as possible so that the city does not come out of pocket. My job is to make sure that this event happens. This event is going to happen. I can assure you that. And we're going to do whatever it takes to make it happen. <laughs> and uh, maybe my last, last question. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, police expenses is listed as $42,000 here, $72,000, $40 an hour. North Miami is only like a block if that much of this route. If police are going to cost 72000 how can we be sure that's not all going to North Miami Beach and unincorporated Dade? Because that's really where the bulk of this parade is happening. It's not happening in North Miami boundaries 
really at all. I, I, I was going to be nice and give you that block, but north of 151st, except for maybe like the parking lot of, uh, you know, the restaurant, it, it's not in North Miami. So how do we know that any of this money is going to North Miami off duty? I can answer that, Councilman. Um, what they put down is a cost uh, for security, and it's, gonna, it's going to involve off-duty police officers. Because of our mutual aid, we will be asking officers throughout the county to come and work this event, and they will get paid $40 uh, an hour to work this event. And that's cool, except if North Miami off-duty doesn't get any of it, and it's we're paying, we, the event, yeah. is paying yeah. North Miami Beach. Hi, I love you, North Miami Beach. But if we're paying North Miami Beach and Miami-Dade off-duty to come in and work this event, granted, it is in their jurisdiction, but, I, you know, I, I would like to see something a little bit more favorable written into some language for our police officers. As it is, North we Miami is, is shouldering sure. the, the, the burden of making sure this happens. You have a contract with us. You don't have a contract with North Miami Beach. You don't have a contract with Miami-Dade County. You don't have a contract with my Biscayne Park, et cetera, et cetera. So our officers, if and when this ends up happening, should be the ones that bear the fruit of the off-duty, oh, in my they opinion. They will be the priority. No, I, 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 I can attest that. Um, the city of North Miami Beach, I mean North Miami Police, and our company have been working very diligently together. Like I've been in contact with Major Trevor Shin, uh, Commander Dominguez, and North Miami has a priority just because this is just a North Miami event. Um, I can assure you that, con considering the fact that we are putting this event together, as well as um, myself, as well as the city manager, we have the ability to prioritize who's going to secure the event. Um, so you <coughs> can assure that that will be a priority. I'll be honest, tonight I'm not very comfortable with where this stands after a half a year, and I said six months later I'll give you some heck. If not, I might be willing, if the council's still willing, to give you another month and be back here at this time, the beginning of November, to see if some of this stuff has been ironed out. But too much of it for a half a year into the project, too much of it is loosey-goosey. And I, and I get it that there were some issues with the with the uh, the route, but that still doesn't mean that I don't have to be accountable for the taxpayers' dollars. So I'd like to see a lot more solid uh, accountability moving forward. So and that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh, go ahead. Thank you. Um, when is the tentative date? What the date that we had again? April 6, 2014. April 6, 2014. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so um, if the sponsors do not go through, what would happen? Are we still going to have a parade or? Well, we, what, we, what we're doing is that this is just, for example, the expenses are based on an event. We have the ability to scale the event down or expand the event if we come into more sponsors. If we get a sponsor that puts $500,000 into the event, we're going to have an event for $500,000. If, if we only generate $200,000, then we're going to still have an event, a great event, at $200,000. Okay. Um, I know we don't have a contract with uh, Mr. Carriard Company regarding specification of the um, Mardi Gras, how much it's supposed to cost, who will pay for it. Yeah, we've been talking. We're going to um, secure the sponsor. What is, but I, I, I'm just talking. Sure. I have to look at you. I have to look at somebody. Sure. But I know that it's up. That's up okay. I mean, us up here that have to take the decision. But I was here at the time that we actually decided to have the Mardi Gras. Unfortunately, we have three council members who were not here at the time. Um, if, I, I hope that we're thinking about I don't mind having a Mardi Gras. Specifically, it's not happening on Saturday, so I will be. Is it on Sunday? Saturday? Sunday. So I'm coming. Friday night. Uh, you even. But anyways, um, so w what's going to happen? How we think about if we, from now, as of now, I don't think that we have the money that we're expecting to have, the Mardi Gras, the way that I know that you guys have been. I have not gone to one, but I have watched it on TV. So I really want to be physically on the one that you're having in, in North Miami. But, however, I don't see it happen the same way that you guys, you know, have been doing Mardi Gras before. Um, we only 
a couple of months before this event happened. I'm not seeing the money. And seriously, we not, I know, I'm not voting to spend not even a dime on that Mardi Gras. I'm not talking about paying my consultant because I know you guys have been doing a good job. I'm not talking about that money. But putting money towards a Mardi Gras, I know I'm not going to support it. But I'm not, I, I don't see any ways that we're going to actually raise $385,000 before April 2014. Yeah. And I'm not, I don't want to sit up here seeing that we spending $120,000 on consulting when we're going to have a $50,000 uh, I, Mardi Gras, I agree. because if it, does, it wouldn't make any sense. And to the credit that I want to give you guys, you don't want to have something lesser than what you usually have. So that will discredit your, your company. So I'm hoping that we really take this in, into consideration to think about exactly, do we want to invest money on that Mardi Gras or have it? Or if we want to put a hole on it to make sure that where we're going with that Mardi Gras business. Or I'm, I don't remember exactly what has been said in the contract. Are we supposed to secure vendor or, or sponsorship as well? Or it's solely the, the, the consultant was supposed to do it? Madam Attorney, can you answer this? Uh, we don't have a, a literal obligation to secure a sponsor. So it's primarily the responsibility of the consultant. So the consultant is supposed to uh, put the Mardi Gras together, secure a sponsorship, and do it all. So we were just supposed to sit down and watch it go through we're, and we're enjoy support. it. We're supposed to support. support. As, the, as the city manager indicated, the city didn't have really the infrastructure and the wherewithal to put together Mardi Gras. So the consultant is the lead, the guide. Mm -hmm. and uh, and the city supports. So p the police department supports him in the efforts to put, put it together. From what I uh, remember, um, the proceed from the Mardi Gras, we had what, 20%, 30% from it? That's correct. I, I think that's, okay. So um, I would suggest that, uh, I would agree with Scott by next month that we have an update uh, regarding the, the Mardi Gras, where we at, and I want the city to take this seriously. If we wanna, if you wanna have a Mardi Gras, we need to, to put effort into it to do it, to do it good, to do it good. And but if do we it don't wanna do city it in the city, councilwoman, to do it in the city. Well, well, that's it's not in the city. Uh. To do it in the city. Okay, I was if we're paying for this, I don't understand why should it happen somewhere else, Mr. Manager. Mm -hmm. When they would then apply for that permit to use Biscayne? You didn't realize that it was out of the city boundaries? Uh, Mayor, we did. Uh, um, a good portion is in the city boundaries. Um, I would have liked to have seen it on 125th Street, like we do Thanksgiving Day Parade. Um, the consultant option. indicated that that could not be done. Um, the, the space, um, again, we don't do Mardi Gras, so we're depending on their lead. Um, we tried other lo locations, 135th and 6th Avenue, which has no medians. Um, again, that location had concerns. Um, the, the other route on 150th, we did meet with the city manager uh, in North Miami Beach um, on 163rd Street. That was a no-go, but on, 100, uh, on Biscayne, the route that has now been selected, it, it seemed to be more user friendly where maybe we may be able to get so a joint agency involvement um, and, and that's where we are. We, we, there's just no place in the city that could hold an event at this level, at this magnitude that the consultant is presenting. Mr. Manager, how in the world this the city have agreed to do something that is not going to happen in the city for the resident of the city at the expense of the resident of the city of North Miami. How did that happen? How? I, this is above my comprehension. I'm not getting it. It's happening. The city of North Miami is having a Mardi Gras that is not going to be held in the city. The city of North Miami is spending all the money 
city of North Miami Beach, and I remember very clearly, the mayor of city of North Miami Beach came here and spoke. I believe that he said it was going to be a joint venture. Now, we end up footing the bills. So far, seven months later, we spent $92,000 in consulting fee to have a maybe $130,000 of consulting and a route that is not in North Miami. That's all we can show for after seven months? Uh, right. Madam Mayor, I don't know if I could answer that. No, I'm, I'm expecting the city manager to give me an answer, Mr. Kaya. Uh, Mayor, Madam I would Mayor. have to defer that to the consultants. No, I no, I need, to, I need somebody to explain it to me. Our and taxpayers are paying for this. It's not happening in our city. And so far, we have nothing to show for seven months later and spending $92,000 on consulting fee. I'd like somebody to give me a logical answer to that. Madam Mayor, and uh, from what I understand, we, we are trying to blame city staff for that. Uh, we need to understand that was a decision made by the council. It wasn't staff that asking for the carnival. The, uh, the city council vote on it and ask the city manager and the city attorney to sign agreement with the consultant. Shame That's when it was a decision. Shame on them. And uh, by looking at the budget, Shame and uh, I find out that uh, we don't have any money in the budget for Carnival, for Mardi Gras. Meaning what? Meaning in order for us to have a Carnival or a Mardi Gras, the consultant and, you and city staff need uh, to work together and getting the sponsors. Without that, we won't have a carnival. Did, are we, we going to be reimbursed from the $92,000? The idea of having a consultant was for them to go ahead and find their own sponsors, Mr. Bienemy. And With uh, all due respect, uh, and, Madam Mayor. And, and that's not, Mr. That's Kaya, not. and uh, I understand, uh, and I've been uh, talking to the city manager, uh, even with the police department, and, and I know they have been looking for routes to do the Mardi Gras. Without the routes, they won't be able to find sponsors. Sponsors. And uh, the police department uh, in some kind and, uh, is responsible for that because uh, every route that we choose and the police department... Um, Who is we, Mr. bien -Aimé? The 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 consultant and the city manager and the police department... Uh, uh, have some uh, security issue about that. And that's when we decide we're going to do it there. And I even talked to the city manager and the consultant uh, at a meeting here. Uh, and I told you guys, are we, doing a, are we having a, an event in North Miami Beach or in North Miami? That's when you told me it's the police department uh, who have some, con some concern about... Uh, the safety, and they said they're going to need a lot more money and uh, to secure an area as like 125th Dixie Highway, 135th to do the Mardi Gras instead of 151. Now, I think the issue is uh, where we're going to find the money to do the Mardi Gras. I think uh, that's the main concern now. And uh, since we don't have money in the budget, no money was allocated in the budget. And, uh, and now, since the consultant have a route to do the Mardi Gras, and uh, I think uh, we should allow them another 30 days or so and to come up with uh, the sponsorship for the Mardi Gras. If not, we won't be able to have a Mardi Gras in North Miami if they don't come up with the money. That's what I think, and I don't know if I'm I, if, I, if, I, if, I, if it's that the point. I, I, I agree with a consultant um, with Councilman Biennemi. Consultant. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> except uh, that I will add um, the mayor is right. When we uh, when Mr. Kaya presented this item before us, um, the mayor of North Miami Beach agreed to have a joint partner partnership with us right mr Kayard? And, and i know for sure that you are a, a very good friend of city of north miami beach i i think that um we should 
I mean, not us. I think Mr. Kaya should help us um, tap on them as well. Because specifically, if we, um, after 30 days, we can't find another route. If we have to do it there, I would rather, instead of cancel, then have North Miami Beach to pitch in, which the mayor himself promised that to help. And if this might, the Mardi Gras is going to happen in his city as well. I think we shouldn't be the only city actually bear all the costs. Uh, may I have the floor, please? Well, I'm not the mayor. She is, so she has. Madam Mayor, may I have the floor? Yes, sir. Okay. I think this is a misunderstanding and misconception of what uh, the whole project is all about. Because uh, you're talking about consulting fees, about seven months, about this, about that. It's very nice people who, who listen to that and don't understand to be like, oh, what's going on, you know? One more turkeys or one more uh, consultant taking money from the city. That's not it. The reality is that, like Kevin mentioned, if you don't have your route, you could have the million dollar in a project, nothing will happen. Just like if you go and build a house, you could have the nice architect, the engineer, and the money, if you don't have a site to put that nice house, it won't happen. So until we had the route, we could not do anything. We went to 125th Street, it was too narrow. And the cost for security is too high. And I'm just like you, I care about the citizens and the securities. We try, like a month later, 135th Street, it would have cost almost $200,000 just for the security. And you have a dozen of churches there who would oppose to having a Mardi Gras on Sunday where they won't be able to have their, their event. You, we tried 163rd Street. 163rd has two main cities who could go to FDOT and oppose it. Not Miami Beach and Sony Isle. This is their main way going to uh, Sony Isle. Not Miami Beach would oppose it? If we go to 163rd Street, okay. 163rd goes straight to uh, Collins Avenue. So Sony Isle could go and oppose it just like we ask to have the permit. They could say they don't want it. Same thing not Miami Beach. We met together with the mayor of North Miami Beach. We met with Councilman Bienemy, the manager of City of North Miami Beach, and our manager here of North Miami and us when we talk about okay the possibilities of doing it on Biscayne Boulevard. And it was say that not Miami Beach is going to be looking at the possibility of participating in the expenses right there and then because that's the right thing to do. So this is just like uh, the city has a great project uh, which is Biscayne Lending which eventually going to bring money to the city. If my memory is correct, Mr. Swedlow gave $20 million with, before he even put a nail into the land. That's the way things work. You come, you spend some money up front, and then later on you make it happen. I think for the next four or five months, it's going to be crucial because now we have a route. We have, when we did it with the city of, when we did it, the Asian American Foundation put the Mardi Gras Mr. together. Kaya, you're saying that you have a route? Now, yes. You have the permit to do it on Biscayne Boulevard? No, that's not the way it works, Madam Mayor. Like you don't have a route. Madam Mayor, we have and a proposal. And the analogy okay. you just okay. made we, we is not correct one. because before you get an architect, you get the land first I stand and correct. then see the size of the house you want to okay. build I, there. I, I stand the correct. analogy is not correct. I stand correct. We have a proposed route. A okay, proposed so you don't have a route. route. No, it takes And you believe that in the next five or six months, you're going to find the sponsors that will do an event in Miami-Dade County? Madam Mayor, the first time we did Mardi Gras in 2004, it took us three months. And when the city was trying to nickel and dime and all that, we came and out of my own pocket, I put $250,000 in the Mardi Gras. Should we expect the same from you? It might be. With it the $92,000 that might we be. already spent. It might be because I keep my mouth where my, uh, I keep my word where my mouth is. So to finish what I was saying, now we have, a, we have a route. That's when the project started, with a route. We have to understand that even poor country like our country, Haiti, Mardi Gras, it's such a big thing, they put money in the budget. 
Kayocho, who's 40 years now, when they started it, the city of Miami, did County, put money in the budget. When we did the Go to Miami Mardi Gras, did County put $375,000. City of Miami came with forty thousand dollars, twenty thousand from DDA, and twenty thousand from from uh, CRA. And on top of that, they gave us the police because that's what make a city. You guys are the ten, one of the ten best city of North Miami of of the United States. Being one of the ten best city, have some obligations such as making sure that many things are happening, not just the shooting in the streets, not just people who have no sidewalk or the flooding. Mardi Gras or events are part of making a city a great thing, just like movie theaters, the play, you have the beautiful Mocha Museum, that's what makes a city. And when we came here, you, we could revise the contract. I know that I might have an accent, but I read pretty good English. In the contract, it clearly says that the city and us will be looking into sponsorship. Right now, when I talk to the manager for the past two, three months, manager says they're cutting staff and they cannot do that because they cannot go and provide the, the needs to find sponsors. It's in the contract. It never says that we're going to come and, and, and do it. Madam Mayor, simple arithmetic says if we have to find all the sponsors, if we have to put the event together, if we have to come with the headache, why would we give 80% to the city and we keep 20%? We could go to any cities and give them 50-50, they'll be happy. Maybe, of maybe the profit, Kaya, the city is going to make 80% of them. Maybe, maybe, Mr. Kaya, um, doing it in another city would have been the best, the best idea because right now in this city, we are cutting funds, we are cutting employees because we need money. We have in this city over $130,000 um, uh, worth of sidewalk that needs to be done. People who have no roof, people who have water issue. We have urgencies in this city, not a carnival. I'm not putting Madame aside, <laughs> I'm not putting aside, and we are not in Haiti. In Haiti and the Caribbean, we know it is custom. Once a year, they have carnival. Yet, we are not in Haiti right here. We are not in, we are not in Haiti right man, now. Orleans, The city have needs. New Orleans the city make their money have out of needs. That. It's not part of our custom to do carnival. And it's not a priority for the city right now. We're talking about capital improvement. We're talking about putting people at work. We're talking about resolving water issues, fixing people's roof, make sure that the residents of the city are at work. This is our priority, not a carnival. I understand and that. I don't understand why. Why would the city decide to go ahead with a project paying somebody $120,000, giving out $92,000, seven months later for somebody to come and tell me they only have one sponsor and so, and they're not even sure that they have a route, and the event is not taking place in the city of North Miami. Why should we carry the burden this is when the city the of city. North Miami Beach remove himself from the headache knowing that its citizen would not agree to it? See, if they can respect their citizen, why can't we? Why can't we? Madam Mayor, last time I was here, I don't think 5-0 vote mean that every it single... It was election time, No, no, sir. I don't think... It I don't, was election but time. nevertheless... Because I remember saying... Nevertheless... We should have elections more often. Never, nevertheless... It was election time. Nevertheless, two people because were there. Because knowing my friend, Councilwoman Keys, she would not agree upon something like that if it was not M election. Madam Mayor, we, we had um, uh, uh, Councilman Galvin and we had uh, uh, Madam Steril. I think uh, with all the fairness, this is uh, chopping their knees by saying that because they were not going for re-election. Well, shame on and, them. I just and, said and it. it. Was I said a shame on them. Vote. I said shame on them as well because right now this is not our priority. And I believe uh, if anybody wants to make a motion for us to wait for 30 days to get those sponsors and see if it's something you want to go forward with, I myself, I am removing myself from it.